Hey everyone, welcome back to Scott's No Grid. Now, um, what I'm about to show you is something that has actually been sitting here for, geez, nearly three years now. It was pre-COVID. Um, I'm sitting up on top of one of the hills uh, on my property. And on this hill, I've got uh, basically a, a ubiquity uh, outdoor antenna that I needed to power remotely, right? So what I did is I created a video I said like three years ago of me putting together this contraption. Now it's not a great video, but I'm gonna show it after I finish this intro, um, well at least cut down versions of it, because um, it's not good. But at least it will show you know how I did it and, and what I did there. But essentially what I've got here is obviously to power this, right? Like we've got the antenna up there and on top of the antenna we've got um, a pan and tilt 360 degree camera up there, um, which is wireless as well. Um, and to power this we've got uh, this little, uh, contraption here behind me um, so I made this uh, which is a 3d printed battery holder uh, I guess you can say uh, and that is you know holding my own custom battery pack that I put in there with the BMS and everything like that but I'm powering it through power over Ethernet right um, instead of having a you know a power over Ethernet adapter or converter uh, plugged in here meaning I need you know a 240 volt uh, inverter and all the rest of it I'm just running it straight off this very nasty very dirty the cheapest solar charge controllers you could money can buy um, and no it's not a lithium ion but it's running at 24 volt for the power over Ethernet so what that allows me is that the the uh, lipo um, I guess you know, the the specs, the charging specs, the discharging, and all the rest of it is just less than what this does um, in a sealed lead acid battery in a 24 volt configuration. So um, it actually means that my batteries are very well protected. They never go under. They never go over. Um, they stay just right, and it can sit up here for ages with no sun. Um, but essentially, it's charging uh, lovely there. But let's have a bit of a closer look uh, at this. All right, so. We've got our um, solar panels, very small. I think these are 40 watt uh, panels. Let's just have a double check. They should be underneath it. Oh no, 20 watt. So 40 watt total, uh, 20 watt to a volt, uh, running in um, series, obviously. Uh, I've got the little uh, Rio Link um, solar thing to charge the, uh, the pan and tilt camera. Uh, and my really crappy craftsmanship up here, but it has been here for, yeah, as I said, three years and it hasn't missed a beat. So, as you can see, we've got our uh, charging, you can see it's actively charging. Now, what I've done here, I'll actually disconnect my network, essentially, um, is that I'm running this, and we can see um, that's gone a bit crazy now that it's been disconnected from the battery but essentially what I've got is uh, the load on here so the load out of here which is 24 volt um, it's feeding straight directly into it because it's it's a control I was gonna put a you know a step down converter and all the little step up converter all these things and I thought hang on you know this is already comes with a you know a, a, a specific load out uh, DC uh, exactly what power of the Ethernet does so that's going into um, uh, it's going into the uh, this one here, so this is going up into the uh, the uh, AP outdoor AP, uh, and that's powering it. But then I've got obviously the uh, the ones going to the batteries, which are these two middle ones here, and they go into into here up into the um, uh, up into the RJ45 socket, which I've specifically wired into the BMS. Uh, allowing it to uh, charge and discharge the battery, so essentially pull to, pull power from the battery when there's no solar. Um, and it w it's been working like a charm for the last three years, and I'm actually still in amazement that it, it's working. Uh, so let's just plug that uh, back in. And all right, and what we'll do now is we'll cut over to the video of me making it. Hope you enjoy. See you, mate. What I'm going to try and do, and we'll see how it works out is that I have a whole bunch of these, which are the Telstra uh, individual batteries that you get in the, in the Model S, uh, essentially. So these are, these are basically uninsulated, raw, straight from the factory. Um, I've got 
a couple hundred of these. So I was going to put together a 24 volt pack. Now that pack is in this. So this will be, this is 3D printed. Now I'll share the STLs uh, down below. Uh, this is something that I created uh, on my own. So this is going to be the, uh, to hold the batteries. And I also did this as well. So this takes a Cat6 Keystone uh, into it. And I mix this, so this is obviously a, this was just a, um, a Ethernet port before. Uh, stretched it out, made it so that I can fit it onto here, um, and I can have basically uh, power going in and power coming out uh, via the Ethernet port. So because there will be no networks running on this, so I'm going to use the traditional power over Ethernet pair to be able to power the Ubiquiti. And I'm just gonna choose another two because again, we're not running actual network over this uh, to come from the solar charge control. But what I'm gonna try and do, now this is interesting, now this is the cheapest, nastiest, dirtiest solar charge control you can get. I think they're five bucks off eBay, right? They're nothing special. They are sealed lead acid um, solar charge controllers, they are meant for lithium iron, but the 24 volt mode on this is awfully close, uh, both in the, the max and mins as you would have lithium iron, so it should be fine. All uh, right, so we're gonna give this a, this gonna, this a try to be able to charge it, and obviously we're gonna have a little um, a battery, battery management controller uh, that's gonna be sitting on the side of these and all contained within here. So first, first and foremost, we've got to get the uh, battery packs together. Now what I've actually done is I went off and printed these again. So these are 3D printed. Now these are straight off Thingiverse. I'll leave the link below. Uh, and we're going to put together, well, first we've got to insulate these. Uh, then we're going to put these together. Uh, and then we're going to uh, connect them up. So let's do it. So we wrap it. Uh, like so, and then we put the old uh, heat gun to it. And shrink wrap it around. Make sure we don't get the battery too hot. And there we have it, we've got a wrap battery. And then what we'll do is we'll get one of these just for Safety sake. We'll put it around the top. And there we have it. One battery. Now I've just got to do another 13. So now these are done. Let's uh, start setting them up. So it should be 14. And because we want this to be done in series. I'm going to do them on different sides of each other. Uh, that's better. Alrighty, so now that we have uh, the battery pack here, I want to just secure it a bit more, so just temporarily until it's all wired up. Right. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of crap from this, but I don't... Uh, do the spot welding um, on these. I do solder. Never had a problem with it before. Uh, I know, you know, uh, people say it's a no no, but you know, use what you got. And I don't have a spot welder, so that limits my capabilities here. Ooh, there we go. So I might be able to see it. Let's just do all the. Three, four, nine. Three, four, nine. So you can see these are all, um, they're pretty cheap too. I'll put the link of where I bought them from. Three, four, nine. Yep. Cool. So they're all good. They're slightly 
discharged, but not by much. All right, so let's just tidy this up. Cool. All right, so. And look at that. Oh, can you see it? Yep, maybe. Oh, yay. 24.5. Cool. So, working like a charm. Doesn't have to look good to work. Now, I have this thing. It is cheap, it is nasty, um, it's exactly what I wanted because obviously I can't, um, you know, afford to whack a, you know, $100 uh, BMC on this thing that I'm supporting this, right? Like, I'm just happy if it does a half decent job and lasts a couple of years. Um, so we'll soon see. So this is a common port uh, BMC. I mean, it's only got two, so it's got a B minus and a C minus. So that goes to the battery minus, uh, and that goes to the the charge or discharge um, minus. So we, I should say, charge and discharge minus. Need to now put all these in. Alright, so, got everything hooked up here, um, sorry about that, the, the uh, battery's running out on the camera. We've got a positive coming out, uh, now I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Two, if this is all working. So this is a balancer as well. So I should be able to go negative here to positive. There we go. Getting. I don't know if you can see that properly. Uh, Twenty-four. Uh, point five. Uh, which is just what I wanted. Cool. So that is working okay. So there we have it. 24 volt battery pack. All right, I'm back again. We've got this finished. It's a nice sunny day outside. Well, relatively. And it should be all working. So what I've got out here is my solar charge controller. Now, as I said, this is, you know, your nasty $10 eBay jobby. But a great thing about your 24 volt sealed lead acid or gel battery charger is that it's very, very close to the 24 volt, you know, 18650 lithium ion type batteries, right? Um, because their mins, their max, their float, everything basically lines up. So what's great about this is that obviously um, this at uh, 4.2 volts a cell is going to be pushing at 29.4 volts. Now the top float charge here, um, or equalization charge, sorry, which is higher voltage, is 14.4, so 28.8, which is below our the maximum that I want to see on these cells. Uh, and the discharge, which is obviously just as important, is I think at 3 volts, uh, we're looking at 21 volts uh, for the pack. I wouldn't want them to go below 3 volts. And the discharge stop on this is 21.4. So nice and safe for the 18650 uh, Tesla batteries that I've got here. And now the moment of truth is that 
what I have here, and because it's taken me a couple of days uh, to create this uh, video, because you know, family life and everything else, right? Um, is that I created, I, I was originally going to have this power, the power of ethernet device directly, maybe with a maybe with a step down converter in there, something like that, that would keep it at no higher than 24 volts, because uh, this technically goes higher than 24 volts. Uh, and then I thought, well, hang on, why don't we keep things a little bit simpler? And this has got a DC output, right? It's within the power requirements that that PoE requires. Uh, and so I thought, okay, well, first and foremost, let's, I'll show, show this here, is what I've created is essentially using the power of ethernet um, pairs. So usually it's brown and blue, because no matter which way you cable, your Cat5 or Cat6, um, uh, you know, your ethernet cable, it's blue and brown never change. So the brown is negative, DC negative, the blue is DC positive. And so what I've done is I've got this coming in from the charge over here into this. So here's the battery pack. We can see there's the keystone there. Um, I've got the brown and red set up there. And we've got the brown going to the um, C negative, and we've got the blue going to the battery positive there. And so when we plug this in, we should now see that it's happily charging the battery. I don't know if you can see that, maybe not. There, it's currently sitting at 26.5 volts because it's been on charging a little bit today. So it's up from the last time I showed the uh, voltage here. And then we've got the other end, which is coming out of the DC output, running at 24 volts, regulated, uh, going into here. So before I plug this in, just to show, I actually haven't tried this yet, but if I bring up my Ubiquiti app, I should be able to see... Um, this run. So let's log in here. Right. We can see uh, my device is there. I've got four running at home. So let's uh, plug this in and that should light up white if it all works. All right, so that's lit up, uh, which is awesome. Uh, it should start flashing once it's booted. Oh, there it is. So it's flashing. Awesome. So now, now this usually takes a little while to come up, but it should automatically pop in there. Uh, and I might have to use the magic of fast forward to um, cut down the length of the video. Oh, there it is. So it's popped up. Um, I'm not going to adopt it here because this one's for the farm. Uh, but it's working. Awesome, that's what I like to see. So, now the only thing left to do is to put it in its home. So, I created another one. Funny story about this um, is that I built it and measured it without taking into consideration, you know, any of the soldering or wires on top or on the side. And it was an absolute perfect fit for the raw batteries and the uh, and the 18650 battery holders, but it didn't fit with everything on it. So new one, um, and let's put it in. So we'll uh, slide this this in
a nice snug fit, exactly how I wanted it. Now just double check to make sure that nothing's come loose. No, 26.5 is the battery voltage. So that's great. And now, we'll put this in. All right. Done. So I'll screw this in later, but that is our battery box. Yeah. Great little thing. Now, this will be running out in the field. It's waterproof. And look, there you have it. A nice self-contained 24 volt power pack. Uh, what is it? Six, seven amp hours. Uh, that can run something like this in a remote location, exactly what I need, um, with a very, very cheap solar charge controller. Now, I could probably extend this and put in a, you know, a, a raw sort of do-it-yourself Arduino uh, particle, particle I.O. or something equivalent board in there to be able to do my own solar charge controlling if I wanted to and have it fully self-contained. Maybe that's version 2. Uh, but look, let's keep it simple. Uh, let's take, you know, do it with the least cost at all. Let's do it with 3D printing. I love 3D printing and I love being able to use it in a, uh, rather than just benchies and other things and actually put it into real life applications. But I hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something, take something away, improve on this. Have a good one, stay safe, and I'll see you all next time. See you, bye.